Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you about the brand new Waves Super Rack Performer, and it works with your Behringer X32. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I have Waves Super Rack Performer pulled up on my computer here. And what's neat about this program is it used to be part of a sound grid setup. And it had a price tag of around $600. And now they have taken this piece of software, put it into a single version that you can install on your computer that will work for your Behringer X32 using the standard Behringer card that you already have installed on your X32. And what's even better is the price is a lot less expensive. So the first thing that I wanna do is on SoundGrid, I wanna get this set up with my computer working here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit setup. And then right here on audio setup, we have our audio device. Now I don't have it selected on anything currently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go pull up my XLive card, which I have installed on my Behringer X32. Now, if you're installing it for the first time, you're going to have a permission settings that comes up asking if you want to grant access to this software and you'll want to click yes. If you accidentally click do not allow, what you can do is you can go click your Apple, you can go to system preferences, go to your security and privacy, and then under microphone, you will see Super Rack Performer listed here. And you'll just want to unlock and make sure that's checked. Once you've done that, we can open back up Super Rack Performer and we can select a couple different things. We can see that our sample rate is 48 kilohertz, which is the sample rate that I have used on my Behringer X32. Now, the other thing that we have here is our buffer size. Now, our buffer size is actually pretty important because if you have this set too high, you're going to have a lot of latency. If you have it set too low, it's possible that your computer might not be able to keep up. So I always recommend setting this about 64 if you have a middle of the road computer, or if you have a little bit slower of computer, I would probably be in the 128 to 256 area. If you have a blazing fast computer, go ahead and set it to 32. As the lower the number is on this buffer, the less amount of latency that you'll have through the entire circuit. So we want to make sure that that can be at the lowest that it can go. And so if you're using this, it's recommended to have a pretty powerful computer. That way you can be running a small buffer size, having the least amount of latency and have the most amount of processing power for your plugins that you want to have on your channels. So I have this set of my buffer size of 128, and we can see that I have about a 13% CPU usage. If I go switch this to 32, what we'll notice is that this CPU usage is gonna go up. So we can see that this is now hovering about 21 to 26 on my CPU usage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to 128 as my computer was behaving a little bit nicer at this. So we have Super Rack Performer already set up. So the rest of this needs to be done on the Behringer X32. Now, with the Behringer X32, I have a microphone here and it's plugged into channel 16. Now, my recommendation is to set everything on your console as far as preamps go before we add in Super Rack Performer into the mix because we want to make sure that we're setting our preamp gain at the head amp right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my vocal microphone here, and I'm going to page over to my config tab, and I'm going to have the musician start talking to this mic. Hey, check, 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 check. And we're going to adjust our gain until it's at an ample amount. So hey, check, check, there we go. So we can see that I'm at a nominal gain level with this microphone. Now, if you have already pulled up settings for putting your console through to Super Rack already. Then one area that we can go to is we can go to Setup and tab over to Preamps, and we can actually set our gains here. So we can go and select our local 9 through 16, and here's my microphone. Check, check, check. So if I went ahead and went down to my 16 and turned this down, we would hear that I have less of my microphone in this channel. So we're gonna go put this back up to 35. Hey, check, check, there we go. Okay, so we have our microphone preamp levels set. 
The next thing that we want to do is routing all of our channels to Super Rack Performer. And to do that, we're going to hit the routing button. And we're going to patch all the way over to card. Now, we want to make sure that we are sending the same inputs to our card that we currently have on our input block. That means that if I had my microphones coming in from AES50A and AES50B and the local channels, I'm going to want to have those identical channels going to my card. So I am only using my local inputs for feeding into this card. So I'm going to go ahead and select local 1 through 32. But let's say I had a smaller version of the X32, like the Compact or the Rack, and I did have 16 inputs coming in on AES50. Well, in that case, we would need to go and select AES50A, 1 through 16. Or if it was coming in on B, then we would go and select AES50B1 through 16. Or if you happen to be using your user input routing, which allows you to do one-to-one -one patching, you can go and simply go and select our user in on all of these. So we could go user in 1 through 8, and user in 9 through 16, 17 through 24, 25 through 32. But what I'm saying is, take all of your inputs, send them to your card. So at this point, in my Super Rack Performer, I'm going to go to my Overview 1. Now, I have all of these 64 channels available to me. I don't have to have all 64 channels. Um, and actually, I can save a little bit of processing power if we go to Setup, Settings, and then go to 32 racks instead of 64. And I'm going to go ahead and press OK, and that's going to actually save on my processing a little bit. So let's go back to Overview 1. And here on this Rack 1, I'm actually going to patch from input 16, because that's where this microphone is. Now, if you're doing your entire console, I would be selecting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on all of the inputs going all the way through 32. But for this case, I'm going to go to Mono, X Live, Channel 16, so input 16. And automatically, it's going to route my output back to the console already. And so if I take this microphone, check, 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 we can see that I have metering happening here on this channel. And so we can go take a look at my vocal processing chain that I have here. This is my favorite vocal processing chain, by the way. I have my Waves F6. It just rolls off the low end. It does a little bit of dynamic EQ in kind of the mid-range. And there's a little bit of a scoop up near the 5 to 6K range just to clean up the vocal a little bit. And then this then goes into my C6, which is a multiband compressor, into the CLA76, which is an emulation of the 1176 compressor, which is an amazing vocal compressor. And then I do my RDSer in case the vocalist has some very loud S's. I would be a perfect example of that. I use a DSer on my vocal when you guys are listening to this. So the very next thing that we need to do here is we need to get this microphone going into this, out from this, back to our console. Because currently, this microphone is still just coming from the input. I actually haven't routed the card back to the channels yet. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to routing, and we're going to tab over to input. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select card. 1 through 32. So here we go. We have card 1 through 8, card 9 through 16, card 17 through 24, and card 25 through 32. Now, if you have an XUF or an XUSB, what you can do is you can go to Setup and tab over to Card and just make sure that this is set on 32 in, 32 out. If you have the XLive card, one thing that we'll need to do is we will need to set our playback config to be from USB because we want to make sure that this audio is getting back to this console. So once we do that, we can select USB interface. And at this point, this microphone is going from my input to my card to Super Rack Performer back to the card into this channel. So if I go and I actually turn this down, we will notice that 
my gain has gone down on this. And if I go and turn this back up to zero, then we can see that my gain is back up to a healthy level. So I now have all of my processing on super rack for this channel. Now we can take all 32 channels, send them to super rack performer, come back to the console. And now we have the ability of processing all of our channels via any waves plugin that's available on the sound grid network. Now sound grid performer is a native processing program, meaning that it is using the CPU of your computer to do all of the audio processing. SoundGrid is using a SoundGrid server. And I actually have some videos here on YouTube if you search up XWSG. And that is one of the Waves SoundGrid cards for the expansion card on the back of the X32. Now, the benefit of using a sound grid setup is that it's less latency. The benefit of using native is you don't have to have the added expense of having the extra gear to get that sound grid setup working. So if you're okay with just a little bit of latency, we can use native and we don't have to have the expense of purchasing a sound grid server. Now, if you want to check out more about Super Rack Performer, I have put a link in the description and right here on how to view Super Rack Performer. Now, I'm going to be releasing a bunch more videos on how I do my processing on Super Rack Performer and how I would actually process some of my inputs. I will also be releasing another video showing you how to insert Super Rack Performer on your left right bus, which is a little bit different than the routing that I've shown you today. So keep an eye out for those videos. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com. I have a brand new X32 fundamentals course. So if you're wanting to learn the Behringer X32, all the fundamentals around how to use that, make sure to check out my brand new course that I have. Also, if you happen to have any questions, make sure to drop those in the comment section below. And if there's a video that you're hoping that I will make, maybe on a, a plugin of Waves or a different console, please drop that in the comment section below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. Otherwise, thank you and have a great day.